Thanks for staying with us. Um, we would have Steve Harris um, shortly. But Sanzi, I would like to hear, you know, what mm -hmm. you, I mean. <laughs> My view on entrepreneurship. 2020 is just, is just an interesting it's year. So uncertain. like, okay, so for me now, I have a business that I run mm -hmm. and I, ha I haven't um, gone to that space. There's no, there's no single activity going on there for the past three months. Right. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I had just renovated, spent a lot of money to reinvest into the business because we're mm -hmm. trying to rebrand and take it to the next level and all right. of that. And immediately we completed the refurbishing and all of that of the business space. Mm -hmm. Lockdown happened. So the question now is after spending so much money uh, building a brand, and this was like February or thereabouts. Yeah. So right now you're not making the gains, you're not seeing the, 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 the money you invested in there. So what exactly, that, that, that's a difficult place to be in. I mean, I am not an entrepreneur. I haven't ventured into um, any business. I have supported a couple of people, but I haven't like, I personally, Sandra, I just started up a business and said, this is what I'm getting into. So quite frankly, I don't, I don't know what that feels like. I only, my my job is mostly to render services and get paid for it. So um, to me, um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> entrepreneur, uh, to be an entrepreneur in this um, period, uh, pandemic, um, post COVID and during the pandemic, is uh, is already it's already a tough task to be uh, an entrepreneur. Then this period is tougher because one, you don't have. Um, the normal way you're supposed to transact your business, which we have to go online to do it most of the time these days. That's why we have a lot of webinars and um, entrepreneurs are looking for more innovative ways to actually do. Well, um, well maybe, I mean, when we have um, mm. Steve back, I would like to know, because mm. I think, honestly speaking, mm -hmm. right, this is supposed to be like the year where a lot of businesses would reinvent and truly take their brand global, right? If you yeah. look at what this is bringing or this mm -hmm. is pushing us towards, right? Mm -hmm. It is pushing us towards going to that space where we can actually now not play small anymore. So because you are forced to go digital, you're forced to push your brand, put your brand out exactly. there. Exactly. But I'm just wondering that with all the things happening, mm -hmm. you know, should my focus be on profit? Should my focus be on, you know, um, running my business? Or what should my focus be? Or should, I, or should my focus just be about staying alive? For now. You know, so what should go on in the mind of me as a business person? I think for every entrepreneur out there, I think the first thing is to create awareness of your brand, what you represent, what you want to, you want people to know you for in the mm -hmm. years to come. So for now is create the awareness. If you're not making your profit, that's fine. But the key thing is try making to Making sure that you, you are, are existing in the mind and you're in the of minds of every, people. That's, yes. that's you know, so quite frankly, I, I can't wait for us to have Steve back because he, he <laughs> like, there is this thing he does, mm -hmm. that um, economic Bible study, and I mm -hmm. follow it, well, not back to back, but as much as I can. So in one of those, I think he's talked about um, brand positioning, the relevance of mm -hmm. it. And, you know, he would pick, um, I think it's quite a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. So he would pick characters mm -hmm. um, like Jesus, uh, Joseph, and he even talked about sex. Like likened it to an entrepreneur's uh, job or thereabouts, and okay. there was also something he said that I feel that it would be awesome if he could also talk about it. That that faming or what was that word again is meant for wealth exchange. So in times like this, there is wealth exchange. Mm. Like it's a great it's a great opportunity for for wealth exchange. I wish we can. Yeah. I think have he's him back. back. So um, he, so if he, Steve I, I can... enjoy listening to him a lot. Okay. Yeah, if Steve if is back, back um, Steve, thank you so much for joining us this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, ladies. It's, it's a very good compliment, compliment to hear what people think about you behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were listening. <laughs> we didn't even know. <laughs> okay. All right, so quickly, let's, 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 let me, I mean, if you, do you want me to repeat the question again or the, the, I mean, you had the question clearly? I lost a bit of the question. Okay, so I was saying that with all the uncertainty and, you know, uh, liking, liking the, the passing of Ibridu in Godalo, you know, sadly, she was an entrepreneur that was working back to back. I mean, she, she didn't have any breaks. 
during this COVID. I think this COVID was the busiest time for her because I followed her closely on Instagram and I saw that she was working, you know, and for someone like that to just pass on, I'm wondering like, as an entrepreneur, should I be thinking about profit this 2020 or I should just be thinking about staying alive, you know? Like what should be going on in the mind of an entrepreneur at this point? Um, great question. And once again, thank you for having me. And um, our hearts and prayers go out to the Godalo family. Um, we can't begin to imagine what they're going through. Um, so to answer your question directly, I'm going to make a, I'm going to quote something my wife says. And she says, a business that requires your full time presence will die in your absence. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that again, a business that requires your full time presence will die in your absence. And the reason I say that is a lot of entrepreneurs like you mentioned, are working, you know, back to back, and we're doing everything to to succeed. Um, but we're not exactly building the structures to help our business thrive, even when we're not around. Many entrepreneurs can't take breaks, and I'm not saying she or, or her business didn't have no, structure. I'm definitely. sure she did. Um, she comes across as someone who has, had you know, she thought she had her game tight. Yeah. Yeah, she had her game tight. But many entrepreneurs who perhaps are watching or listening to, you know, this broadcast right now may not necessarily have structure. Um, you know, we don't take breaks because you know how it is. If you travel, if you make the mistake and travel, you're not sure your business is going to be standing, you know, when you return. Um, you invest in training your best people and then your best people leave you uh, simply because you didn't have systems or structure. Um, but to answer your question quite specifically, I, I don't think this is the time to just stay alive. This is the time to thrive. Um, and I'll put it this way. I believe that crisis chaos is a ladder. Um, crisis is also an opportunity, um, but it depends on how well you're positioned. So if you think about it this way, if you've ever seen people surf, I, I know we don't surf particularly in Nigeria, but if you've ever seen people surf, um, you would notice that the surfers tend to swim towards the wave. Um, and the reason they swim towards the wave is because they're positioned with the right tools, which in this case is the surfboard. Now, once the surfer gets on the board, all he has to do is to adapt to the direction of the wave. The waves do the work. The wave carries literally the surfer as far as he can go. While other people are paddling and swimming and trying to exert effort, um, the wave does the work. So the reason many entrepreneurs perhaps are struggling at this time is because, you know what, to be honest, many of them were not positioned properly. Um, I, I like to tell people that, listen, what's going on with Corona, the disruption it's caused, um, that's the trailer. You know what I mean? The movie is coming. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so the disruption we feel and we encounter right now is only a picture of the of the disruption that will ultimately come. It may take three years, it may take 10, it may take six months, who knows? Um, but as entrepreneurs, we shouldn't be lulled in into the sense of false security that things have gone back to normal. This is not the time to rest on your laurels, your laurels. This is the time for you to win the mind share of your people. Even if you can't sell some, something right now, you can add value. So this is the time to own the customer's mind share um, and do as much as you can to win their hearts and eventually they'll give you their money as a reward. Okay. Right, um, Steve, you, you talked about um, positioning. Now, in a time of crisis such as, as this, how do you position yourself to own customers, like you rightly said, and also for profit? Well, um, in order to position yourself, you've got to ask yourself right now, like I always say, it's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. Um, so a lot of entrepreneurs perhaps are on ground zero because, well, you know, everyone has to stay home. There are lockdown restrictions, um, this, that, and the other. But guess what? This is the time where, you know, many more uh, individuals and organizations are going online. So you are an authority in something. Your business is an authority in something. You've got to be able to say, how do we adapt uh, you know, to this scenario? Let me give an example, but I won't mention names. So there's a very popular um, hotel chain in the city of Lagos, very popular, very bougie, five-star. Um, and because they were affected by the whole lockdown restrictions, they decided to adapt. And what did they do? They decided that, you know what? Like, like I said, it's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. So what did they start doing? They recognize that they've got this big kitchen that normally would cater to tons and tons of their customers by offering fine dining, gourmet cuisine, and the whole nine yards. So what did they do? They started a delivery service where people could order luxury cuisine from the comfort of their homes. That's adapting. They still got the kitchen. The customers may not come to the hotel, 
But guess what? They can get the food to the customers wherever they are. Another thing they did, they recognized that, listen, hey, we've got this big washing machine that on a regular, we would be able to, you know, dry clean our, you know, customers who are residents in the hotel. But now there are no customers. So guess what? We can offer 24 hour, you know, dry cleaning services to as many customers as possible because we've got this big dry cleaning service. Yeah. So my point is, listen, entrepreneurs are like, like David, we're very nimble, we're very small, so we can adapt and we can be very furtive. Um, but let me break it to you. Goliath, David, has taken off his armor. So the things that used to make David and all uh, Goliath, all the Goliaths in the industry, very unwieldy and very slow to adapt to change. Guess what? They're taking off those restrictions and they're now competing for market share where we, where we as David, thought that, ah, no, they're too big to drag with us. But now they're coming for what we have. So positioning... Um, Put yourself out there, communicate the value you have, win the heart of the customer, and eventually they'll give you their money as a reward. Okay, so like what you said earlier on, you said it's not what you don't have that limits you, but what you, what you have and don't know how to use. So how crucial is this role uh, for mentorship to an entrepreneur? Um, mentorship is incredibly important. You know, I believe that um, experience is not the best teacher. On the contrary, other people's experience is the best teacher. Um, with mentoring comes the ability to model and see how you can reverse engineer systems that have worked with other people. However, um, you don't want to become a clone. So by being mentored, you still must retain your authenticity. By being mentored, you still have to be able to retain what makes you you, your, you know, your secret source, so to speak. So while you can model the systems, you bring your own personality to the fore. So, I mean, give an example. Um, in my line of work as a consultant, as a business coach, there are many amazing business coaches out there who do phenomenal things. But guess what? I decided, you know what? I don't mind being the guy who's a little left field, if you know what I mean. So I can talk about things like the, you know, what sex and entrepreneurship have got, you know, got, got together um, or got in common. And it gets a lot of attention. It wins mindshare. Um, and people talk about that because it's something that they can easily relate to. Um, but if you try to become a clone by modeling entirely everybody's systems, and then you now model their mannerisms or their entire process, you lose exactly what makes you you. And um, someone wants to buy. Yeah, we're having a bit of um, challenges with this network, but. Um... So I, this is actually very interesting, you know, and I mm -hmm. think um, if we have Steve back, I would like to ask what growth is, you understand? Yeah, is it mm -hmm. like financial success, like money is yes. tripping in, or mm -hmm. does everybody know your name out there, but yes, you're not making the money? because we have to now narrow it down to defining what growth means mm -hmm. to an entrepreneur, to a business, because there are too many angles right now, we don't know because in me, I believe the definition of growth for 2020 has changed. Like yeah. stay in alive. any business, you know, <laughs> no, in any business, you know, growth might just mean, you know, like what EC had said earlier on about top of the mind. And I think he also mentioned yeah, it, you know, it, he yes. also mentioned it. So maybe that is growth, you know, but I would like to understand what growth truly means, you know, mm -hmm. and if we say we are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. what should be top most priority, priority. for us? You understand? Now, what should be topmost priority for be, us? Before he comes on board, there is something that... Um, this, this book was written by Carol Dweck, and she um, stated that there are two types of people, one with a fixed mindset and the other one with, an, uh, with a, a growth mindset. A flexible mindset, yeah. yes. So the fixed mindset is not... Um, is not welcoming to things that are interesting doesn't or adapt, can't doesn't adapt. adapt exactly doesn't adapt to new ideas Changes. and concepts compared to that of the growth mindset who is more flexible and open to new no i think i even know the business he mm -hmm. he just didn't want to mention the name me too i will not mention the name <laughs> because in fact when i saw mm -hmm. that business mm -hmm. um when i saw the the uh, what's it called the advert saying that they had started um deliveries I mean, five-star cuisine, mm. blah, 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 to your doorstep. I was wondering, yeah, in this uh, well, COVID-19. Come on, that is brilliant. But that, I, I mean, that is... That was, I mean, I, you would never, ever picture that company 
doing deli food deliveries because the, the, the pride that they carry is to come into that space, a beautiful space, and dine. But that is you know? who, so that's what I'm saying. That you see, your is like you go high, no, so you go I'm just, low, yeah, I'm just, it takes. I'm even trying to relate with what, what um, I've just said. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the truth is, going forward, I think they would continue because, mm -hmm. regardless of whether um, people come in to dine and mm -hmm. they, I mean, COVID hopefully is over. Mm -hmm there will still be that gap. There will still be that need. So for me, that kind of a business, they've, they've grown. already created another... Because now they have, they have created another channel yes. to which they can take their services exactly. out there. Exactly, exactly. You know, and if a company like that is dry cleaning your clothes, you would know that, yes, you will not have issues mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, some kind of... Um, you so, know. Talking about but, you know, innovation, so while, while talking about innovation yeah, right. there is also another company who is also into making children's clothing, yeah. and they just immediately Switched within the next, nose mask, within yeah. two weeks, yeah. they had already. Yeah, Sandy, you were going to quickly mask. say. Yeah, I was quickly mm. going to point out that um, there is something he said that stood out for me, and I just don't want us to like let it slide. Um, mm -hmm. That a business that requires your full time presence will definitely. Um, yeah, like, it also fold. stood out for me. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I, and that's you know, we what always a lot said of businesses. That lag that's why when mm. the father or whoever the founder the, the brain yeah, yeah. behind uh, it yeah be the brain behind the business when the person dies or decides to just yeah. lose interest the business dies yeah and that's sad so um mm -hmm. I, I think we have steve back steve um so i was going to ask you what definition what growth would mean if i see that i am growing as a business what would growth mean to any business at this point because when you mentioned that thing about you know if a business cannot survive without you you know, I looked at it. How many business truly do we have in Nigeria? How many, how many entrepreneurs do we have truly in Nigeria mm -hmm. that their business is so structured that when the founders are no more, no more there, the business outlives them? It's very few. Yesterday, we were talking about uh, Mabiola. We had Sheon Kuti, and he exactly. was mentioning where, her, where are all his businesses business today? today. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I think it's something that we don't truly pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So if we say we're growing in 2020, right, what is growth? What does growth mean to us to right now, to right an entrepreneur? Um, great question. So um, growth is actually in three areas for every entrepreneur. And you've got to be able to decide which one you're going to focus on mm. post-COVID. Um, so you can either grow in impact, you can grow in influence, or you can grow in income. All right? So you can decide, you know what? Um, even though we, we're not making a heck of a lot of money, let's see how we can grow our influence right? Let's grow our brand. That's where our brand strategy and all those things come in. Um, another way you can grow is to decide, hey, you know what? We're probably not making as much money as we can um, or, or we should. Let's grow in making a difference. Let's grow in impact. And then thirdly, of course, you've got to be able to see how you can grow in income. Um, now, every, every business is different and everybody's parameter is going to be entirely different. Um, you were talking about the whole thing about um, the Abiola businesses, um, unfortunately. Um, I think many entrepreneurs focus on the aesthetics of their business. So marketing is, a, is an aesthetic. It's fantastic, but it's, it's just an aesthetic. You know, branding, HR, all those things are great. They're all the aesthetics. They're the ambiance of your house. But structure is the foundation. So if you don't, if you build a crappy foundation, no matter how pretty your business is, without the structure, without the foundations, carry that weight, it'll all come tumbling down like a, uh, like a pack of cards. Um, so every entrepreneur needs to be able to sit down and say, you know what, where can we diversify? And what can give us the greatest bang for our buck? Is it impact? Is it influence? Or is it income? Awesome. All right. Okay. So there's a quote you were quoted to have to to, to I mean to say um, focus is the ability to limit your distractions to just one thing. Right. You may be capable of doing many things, but you just have to start with one thing. Right. That was your quote. <laughs> so right. now with COVID nineteen, we've seen a lot of businesses trying so hard to, to focus on so many things that they perceive to be thriving at this point. Would you say that is a good move or is a bad move? Um, hmm. Well, it's a, it's, it's, it's a catch-22, to be honest. And uh, the reason I say that is every business has to look for the ways that, you know, they're going to look at what, what, they're going to, what they're going to do to survive. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, the question is, what do you want to be remembered for? Um, every business, you know, some businesses are playing the short game, which is, I just want to survive. Let's just pay salaries and just, let's kukuma, 
survive. I can't believe I just said Kokuma on national television. Yeah, it's Jesus fine. Anyway. <laughs> it's <okay. laughs> right? Let's Kokuma survive and just get past this and hope, hopefully something will get better. Mm. Um, other, other businesses are playing the, the, the long game mm -hmm. um, and they're looking at their brand. So, for example, you wouldn't see, even though that, even though face masks and sanitizers, for example, are um, quick wins and cash cows, you wouldn't see a bank, for example, going into the business of selling face masks and sanitizers. Why? Because they know it's going to erode their brand. Mm. Now, unfortunately, many entrepreneurs, please forgive me, are traders. They're not business people. Wow. You know what I mean? Many entrepreneurs are traders. So what's the difference? A trader sees an opportunity and builds, builds on the opportunity. He's not thinking about his brand. He's not thinking about reputation. He's not thinking about what he wants to be remembered for. He's just trying to make a buck. But businesses that are thinking about how do we build our brand, how do we build longevity, how do we, when we say, when you mention my, you know, what problem should people have for my business to be the answer? You know what I mean? So, um, unfortunately, many entrepreneurs are just trading off their brand on the altar of a quick buck. Um, and so at the end of the day, they're going to be, you know, please forgive me, you know how it is. Um, where you see people with business cards and they're, you know, importer, experts, uh, exporter, graphic design, MC, baker, wedding, you know, all these sorts of things. They're jacks of all trades um, and masses of none. Focus is the ability to limit your distractions to one thing, which means you can do many things, but you've decided, you know, all of these things are distractions as compared to what our vi business's vision or, or goals are. Right. You know what? I'm going to ask you a question that seems rather funny, but um, I've heard a lot of people ask it, and that is about the law of attraction. Online, you see a lot of quotes. You're going to be the first millionaire in your family type first. Believe this, believe that. And so the question now is, um, is, is there a certain mentality that attracts um, success or money or people to you? Um, that's how I attracted my wife. That's so yes, I'd, I'd say yes. Um, so you believe in laws of attraction? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I do. But, um, but here's, here's the balance with the law of attraction. So yes, your mind. So let me give an example. If you're really strong in your mind and you say you want to buy a particular car, whatever that car is, you notice that all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere, Yeah. you know, and it's not because, you know, your mind says, oh, it's like they're, you know, it's like this guy is common. It's all over the place. And that's not true. The only difference is your mind has you know, there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, system yeah. and what it does it, it brings things into focus that you really strongly feel you feel strongly about so it removes all the other things as distractions and hones in on what you really want to focus on so that's what the that's what it does but beyond just that here's the interesting thing um for that to happen so to speak that law of attraction to happen there's got to be synergy between your mind your will and your emotions. So your, your mind, you, if your mind says, oh, I want this kind of car, right? Your, your heart has to believe it. So let me give an example. If you're in church and your pastor's preaching it, like you said, oh, you're going to be the first millionaire in your family. Um, you, what, what happens is your brain, your subconscious mind takes that prophecy or prayer and then it downsizes it to your belief system. So your, your subconscious doesn't take your vision and supersize it. No, it doesn't. Your subconscious takes your vision and then downsizes it to your reality. So if the pastor says you're going to be the millionaire, first millionaire in your family, you're going to make dollars of this, that, and the other, your hearts, your true belief system says, ah, amen, no, but God, you know what? That one million, can you pay me like 100, 100K every month, at least at the end of the day, year, bad as bad, I would have made a millionaire, right? So what it does is it takes your, your, your subconscious mind downsizes your belief your your so to speak your attractions or the things you're trusting god for and and um what's the word um makes them smaller to fit your reality okay so we have a question on whatsapp nelly is saying i think you've already answered this well just still ask the question nelly is saying can steve really define what what an entrepreneur is in nigeria is the woman in the market selling goods an entrepreneur you already said that traders are not entrepreneurs but the second question is quite interesting um, Toyin is saying, what will Steve advise or um, one that is thinking of just starting a business this year? Right. Um, first off, you've got to find the market. So what's the, what, this is the difference between entrepreneurs and, and traders. And I mean no disrespect. So um, 
traders are looking for anything that will float their boats. So if it's Forex, I'll do Forex. If Pure Water is the next best thing, I'm going into that. If it's blockchain, anywhere belly face as the case may be. Um, entrepreneurs first off start with a vision of what they want to represent. Mm -hmm. So they say, for example, I want, we want our business to be, the, we want to focus in this line of work and every other opportunity is a distraction until we have the capacity to begin to diversify. So for the answer to the person who's asking, you know, what should I get involved in is to first say, wait, hold on a second. Are you trying to build a business or are you trying to make money? Because they're two, two different things. If you're trying to make money and just try to get by, sweetheart, you can sell masks, you can sell sanitizers, you can sell bread, mm -hmm. whatever it is, there are different things that you can, you know, you can get your business into to, to make a quick mm -hmm. buck. But if you're saying you're trying to start a business, the question is, what is your essence? What's your vision about? And I know be, some people say, who vision if we're trying to survive? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but the point really is um, entrepreneurs are able to look at their business and say, what problem do I want to solve? You know, that I'm not going to be distracted by every other shiny object. So a lot of entrepreneurs in Nigeria suffer from what I call shiny object syndrome. So they have that thing where I can do all things through Christ, or so to speak, anything. I, uh, is it not to supply water? I can supply. Is it not to supply gilly? I will mm. supply. Is it not to do plastic? I will do. Mm. You know, I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy, mm -hmm. right? And, and the essence really is you're not really trying to build a brand with your business. You're just trying to make money. Um, so to answer the question directly, I would say really think about it and say, you know, if you're starting a business based on something you may be passionate about or you're not passionate about, or you think that you're frustrated about a problem, you want to solve it, then look, look at the markets and say, what problem do people have that I am capable of solving? If not, you can join, join, you know, jump on any bandwagon and um, ride it down until that, you know, until that wave ends. Because guess what? This coronavirus that mm -hmm. has brought out masks and sanitizers, that wave is going to end. And after a while, right. once that thing has flattened out, what you know, happens to your out, business? Exactly. Yeah. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, that was a beautiful question, um, response to that question. But still in line with um, startup businesses, it can be quite overwhelming for entrepreneurs who are actually starting businesses to take in a lot of information and in the process also um, um, read a lot in the process. That the information they're also taking in gets a bit distorted in as well because they're doing a lot of self-education in the process so how can an entrepreneur maintain and master resilience and growth mindset in the midst of turbulent challenges well first off if you're living in nigeria you already have resilience if you know what i'm saying waking up in the morning is resilience by itself you know what i mean getting through the day test your tenacity in lagos you mean exactly. in lagos well yes in lagos <laughs> Yeah, but shout out to everyone else who's living in another city. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, there are going to be a lot of hurdles thrown at you. Um, but, you know, the truth about it is, listen, sometimes there's the excitement, the thrill of the chase, knowing that you live to fight another day. Um, do we wish things could be easier? Absolutely. I mean, every entrepreneur wishes things will be easier. But guess what? Um, I like to work out. So I like to lift weights just for fun. And I realized that in working out, you know, it's in it's in the the it's in the it's in the size of the weights um, that builds your capacity. You know what I mean? So you can start you can see a hundred kilogram weight, but you can't you can't lift it immediately. You have to do little basic things, consistent movements. Um, it's in the consistency that you can ultimately build capacity. Let me say that again. It's in consistency that you can build capacity. So what that means for every entrepreneur is yes, you've read. You've put some stuff out, out uh, you know, you've read some things, you've developed yourself, but you can't learn how to swim by reading a book, mm. right? You have to go get wet. You know, you exactly. can't learn how to swim by reading the book. You've got to get into the water and then start paddling. Um, but again, one of the things that I recognize that makes things easier is, hey, you got to get a coach. You know what I mean? And I know it's not the right. thing that most people it's are used to. Um, say that again. I said, so mentorship comes in. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where it is. You know, so you got to get a coach, you know, um, someone who un understands business may not necessarily be your business, but they're universal principles that guide them. Um, but somebody who understands how to market, how to position your brand, all those things come in. Um, and that's you, you just got to get started. All right. So, uh, OK, we have one question on uh, WhatsApp. But before right. I say, I mean, the, I mean, before I read out the question, there's a quote you mentioned when you said, be willing to fail more times than others are willing to try. That's how you win. 
You know, I think maybe most times a lot of people are afraid to fail as entrepreneurs. And they don't know that I think it's in the failing that we eventually, you know, get better and we exactly. win. You know, um, because this question is how can Nigerian businesses start building generational businesses like other nations? You know, that's the question from Dupe on, on WhatsApp, you know. So maybe you should okay. quickly answer that. Then Sanzi has the final question for you. Um, so thank you, Dupe, for your question. Um, generational wealth or generational businesses come through um, institutionalized structure. So let me use this metaphor that I hope um, will pass the message across. So imagine you're, you know, you're a mom, you're, you're, new, you're, you're, you're a new mom, you're a new mom, and your baby is coming in. And now naturally the baby has its own demands. The baby has his own, you know, he cries when he wants to, you know, does whatever he wants to, to do. But you as the mom, you decide to put the baby on a routine. So you feed the baby at a certain time. You burp the baby. The baby use the pot, uses the potty at a certain time. The baby goes to sleep at a certain time. After a while, the baby begins to adapt to the routines that you've created for it. Then you now realize maternity leave is over. I got to get back to work. Hire a housekeeper or any. Now, guess what? The nanny comes in. The nanny doesn't just up and pick up. Oh, sugar. What happened? Must wow. be bathed. This okay. is how the baby must, must be burped. This is how the baby must be done. So there is a process. Now, the difference is, unfortunately, you know, so put it. Go can ahead. you still hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, so the, the difference is many entrepreneurs don't have the process written down so that even if you fire the ne even if you fire that nanny, the next nanny that comes in can still continue with the process, birth the baby. So what happens is every time new nannies come in, you have to teach each of them individually. And then your best nannies leave, you start all over again, simply because you don't have a process. So what you need to do as an entrepreneur, no matter how basic you think or mundane you think your business is or your routine is, write it down, write it down, such that at the end of the day, as people are coming through, they know what the process is. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. And then teaching becomes easier. Or record it, for example. Record it. This is our HR onboarding process. This is what we do. Record it on a video, five-minute video. Everybody watches it, irrespective of who comes and goes. So in order to have um, generational businesses, you must first institute um, structure and then our values. All right. And then all, all these things, which is why I, I said, you know, from the beginning that many entrepreneurs in Nigeria are traders because traders are not thinking about succession planning. They're not thinking they're about thinking how, of making you know, money. Yeah. So one they're, final they're question, Steve, making, because we have yeah. like one minute to wrap up. Sanzi, quickly. Yeah, um, sure. Well, sadly, you probably wouldn't have enough time to answer this question. But if you could, in like bullet points, um, you have this book, Honey, Why Are We Poor? Which I think is a rather um, <laughs> funny title, but very catchy and interesting. <laughs> so um, I would like to ask, um, mm -hmm. why is it that a lot of Christians, or if you may, spiritual people, end up poor and perhaps irrelevant to the society? Because they don't know how to make, manage, multiply, and master money. Hmm. Fantastic. Four bullet points. <laughs> I think we should just... <laughs> Great. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank you so much, Steve. We are hoping to host you live uh, in our studio. So by God's grace, we'll be able to bring you live and you know spend more time with you. Thank you so much I'm for a wonderful to evening and a great conversation. Why so, ladies, quickly in one minute? Hmm. Wow. Are you kidding me? That yes. You're asking Packed. me to like tell you what I picked <laughs> up in a minute. We're it's going not going to be possible in like five extra minutes. I love but, the um, fact that he said the uh, triple I's, which mm, was mm -hmm. impact, influence, and income Very for important. growth. Areas of growth. Yes, right? for growth, mm -hmm. it is it's so essential. And I and I and I also took from the fact that uh, from him that structure in any business That's is. Key. Key. Quickly, Sanzi, how about and, you? And uh, inconsistency, mm -hmm. you build capacity. Mm -hmm. And also, awesome. um, the, the, the part he talked about, uh, coaches are relevant, very, very relevant. You need mentorship, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And also, absent, a business that requires full-time presence will die in your absence. I think that is so key. Mm -hmm. I should, like, make it a quote and a poster, yeah. like, quote Steve Harris. Right? You, know, yes. so, you know, so for me, what, <laughs> what I think... Um, stood out for me tonight mm -hmm. is you need to define who you want to be. Do you want to be a trader or you want to be an entrepreneur? Because if you mm -hmm. want to be a trader, right, it means that you're not focused on generational business, like the question that mm -hmm. Dupe asked. But if you want to focus on building, you know, a company that would outlive you, 
it means that first of all it must start with a vision mm -hmm. exactly do you understand so you now see why a lot of businesses are failing and structure exactly. right they are failing because there's no this is where i'm going they don't have that vision in place mm -hmm. because when you have that vis vision in place then you now begin to put in the right structures mm -hmm. that would help that vision to grow whether you're there or not right. on exactly. ways we have a structure so <laughs> right. I don't have to and there's also the, the part about the trader and the yeah. businessman, the difference. Mm -hmm. I think that was very, very key, key how he differentiated mm -hmm. it. Yeah, very key. So I think it's very important. I'm so happy we're able to catch Steve Harris and hopefully we'll bring him live we to can't the studio wait. for <laughs> another can't exciting wait. conversation. <laughs> now remember, mm -hmm. you can watch this repeat broadcast at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Um, 3 p.m. there will be a repeat broadcast of this episode and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa. Now, right. if you missed the quote for today, here it is again. Now, it's, um, it says, entrepreneurship is a state of mind, a can-do attitude, a capacity to focus on a vision and work towards it. You see? Yep, you got to work. <laughs> so you see the vision get is this idea. Debt, get in the trenches, yes, work. Yes, you have to do the work. You have to do the work. So we'll see you guys. Oh, I can't believe it's already Sunday. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll see you guys live again on Friday, 8 p.m. for another great conversation. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Ladies, say bye. And stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Thank you.